Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. As you guys can see, it is your host with the most, Paul Plant 2. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I create a native tree nursery for absolutely free. How to grow some big ass trees that will benefit wildlife, animals, insects, all of that, right here, right now. So before we get started, always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. So yes, today I am traversing my yard and finding as many tree species as were planted by birds, either taking craps, squirrels, burying nuts, and overall just trying to find all the species I have growing in places that I might not find as necessarily desirable, but how you can actually grow those trees, cultivate them in pots, and then transplant them exactly where you want. So there is nothing better than trees that are absolutely free 99. And sometimes the best way to find those trees is just to let time pass and not to pull up everything that grows in your garden beds, okay? All right, y'all. So first and foremost, we have a tree that my dog is conveniently blocking right now because she is obsessed with my face. So right here we have a sugar hackberry tree that is growing in the middle of my lawn slash the area where my dogs do play. Now this tree in particular is extremely beneficial for wildlife species. So it gets covered in berries that birds love to munch on. It does grow vigorously, which is very cool. But in this spot in particular, it is not ideal. Now I have one of these trees that's growing on the side of my house in a spot that will attract wildlife, will give the birds something to eat on that won't necessarily be my fruit trees and it's only been there a year and this is how big it has gotten so it's absolutely crazy the rate at which these sugar hackberries grow but this one needs to be potted up and moved so whenever i'm extracting small little saplings i try and clear the area and just make sure i dig a shallow hole and try not to damage any roots now this sapling was perplexing because it literally grew off a random branch i threw on the ground what the hell all right y'all so we have the sugar hackberry out of the ground I am like 80% sure this is a sugar hackberry. Now, when I identify seedlings, I use iNaturalist, and seedlings are admittedly a little bit harder to identify based off their features. But what I like to do when I pot up these free trees is I use a mixture of the cheapest soil possible, which is topsoil, and then I go in my back corner and I get a ton of compost. Now, this compost has been breaking down for over a year. It adds nutrition to the low nutrient level of topsoil and I think it is a good combination on a budget for these trees. And with native tree species, they don't usually need too much babying. So let's go ahead and get that mixture done and plant this guy. Now I also do prefer using three gallon pots just because they're bigger and when they're full of soil, they won't dry out as quickly and it provides more room for the roots to grow. Now, obviously, since this mixture does have some unbroken down compost or unfully broken down compost, it will sink a little bit over time. Now, this is where a ton of the energy is coming from. There are some roots, so I could try and preserve this whole thing, but it is pretty stiff. So I am going to trim this section. Yeah, that one I can bend up. Now when planting, it's as simple as just placing the seedling in the soil. You don't want to bury it too deep. Just cover up all the roots and then you're good to go, brothers. Now when I'm done adding soil, I like topping everything off with leaves just to prevent any weed growth from occurring. All right, so that's the first tree done now y'all may be curious why i'm even doing this in the first place well in the future my goal is to buy some degraded land and hopefully transform it into kind of a native plant paradise with a huge food forest as well and on top of that i love having trees that if someone needs a tree in their yard i'm like hey you can have this for free i've done that with a few magnolia trees which is really cool and when you plant a tree that is tiny and you see it grow up over years and years and potentially your lifetime it is a gratifying feeling so uh, let's get on to the next species. I'm looking at it right now. So the next tree that we have is this beautiful overcup oak and it almost is a shame for me to move this tree because this guy can get like 30 to 45 feet. It loves par shade, it loves 
moist soils near like swamp-like areas and conditions, but it also can tolerate dry soils and it attracts a ton of waterfowl with its nuts. So it is nuts. And it's a shame to move this guy, but my neighbor's house is right behind this fence where they have windows overlooking my property. This bad boy is deciduous, which means it'll lose its leaves in the winter time. And I want something evergreen to obstruct their view at all times of the year. Cause my neighbor, she peeps a little bit. She's a little peeper on the cool, she a peeper. But yeah, I'm gonna dig this guy up and I am gonna transplant him. I actually have one of these that has already been potted up and is big, vivacious, and thriving. So uh, let's go ahead and get this guy dug up. But if you do see a tree you really like, you can keep them short and almost like a shrub, if that's what you prefer. But let's go. Now, one thing I wanna tell y'all is it's probably better to dig up seedlings when they're about half, if not a quarter of this size, because once they start having a trunk and getting tall, the root structure is deep. And if you destroy the roots, you can expect some dieback and a little bit of a harder transplanting transition. You dig? Dude, this is so deeply rooted. It's actually crazy. So look how deep this root structure is. I probably dug a good eight inch deep hole and unfortunately I'm going to have to cut it. Hopefully it lives, but it is what it is. There's like concrete, there used to be a swimming pool over here. So right here you can see there are a ton of tiny roots coming off this trunk. It may lose some leaves, it might suffer for a while, but honestly I think this was buried underneath concrete from when they destroyed the path surrounding the pool that used to be in this yard because I kept hitting rocks when I was trying to dig deep enough to extract this guy. So there may have once been a giant willow oak in this area and one of its roots managed to spring up this guy. And uh, we're gonna try and keep it living on. Hope it doesn't die. Another one, complete. So the overcup oak is in its planter and here's an example of one that I did dig up a year ago and I planted in this pot and it has gotten absolutely ginormous. It is super vivacious, but my best example of transplanting a tiny tree and turning it into something awesome would be this giant mulberry tree. Now this was a tiny, little seedling slash sprout. I dug it up, transplanted it here. It literally was like this big. And now it's like 12 feet tall. I mean, maybe that's 10 feet, but hey, we can have some room for exaggeration. But yeah, this my friends is why I do this. Man, this tree is massive. So the next tree I'm digging up, I actually have three of on the property that have sprung up and they are these willow oaks and again i cannot stress the importance enough if you guys do not have an oak tree on your property definitely plant one they bring in so much wildlife host a ton of different butterflies and moth species and they just are an integral part of the food web so by all means man if you have oaks keep them if you don't have them get them but this guy is growing right behind my peach tree literally a foot away and that is a conflict of interest they're probably going to merge into one another eventually so i'm going to dig this guy up all right so hopefully you guys can see this we did have to sever the tap root once again it is in oak's nature to send down a really deep root i'm just going to make it a clean cut it still does have roots up top and hopefully it will preserve its vitality now willow oaks also grow in part shade and they really love moist soil. So I'm gonna have to water this guy a lot. They also host the white hair streak. All right, there's willow oak number one. Then we have this tiny guy who is right next to my mulberry tree, also a willow oak. He's about maybe nine inches away. So he has got to go. That's number two. And then last and certainly not least, we have a third willow oak right here, front and center of this bed. I actually am gonna leave this guy because I don't feel like moving all these bricks. And I love the leaf structure and I think I can keep this guy in a nice ball kind of head shape. So this will kind of be like having a bonsai tree in the front of this bed. So this dude, I'm giving him the green light. 
to stay. Now I'm going to dig up some trees that are prolific all over my property and they are these Texas ash trees or at least there's some form of ash tree. I have one right here, right, which again is about two feet away from my peach and then maybe three feet away from the peach I have yet another ash tree and then by my other peach I have yet a third ash tree in my backyard. Hopefully I don't get demonetized YouTube. I'm saying ash, not ash. All right, but look at this one. Actually, this one's growth habit looks slightly different. I'm gonna have to fully examine this guy. So I just eye natted this tree and my dog ran it over. And it's saying it could be a pecan, but I'm kind of leaning to the fact that it might just be a green ash tree. Just because there's so many ash trees around and regardless of the fact if it is a pecan it definitely will cast way too much shade on my wildflower area and it will shade out my peach tree so got get it up now ash trees are so versatile they can grow from zones three all the way to nine and they host a ton of different butterfly and moth species such as the tiger swallowtail the morning cloak the orange sulfur and there's just a ton of wildlife benefits that come along with this tree it also can grow in shade part shade or full sun so it's versatile and luckily there are no ash boring beetles in houston yet three ashes well two ashes and maybe a pecan hopefully planted so last is certainly not least for this video, we have a bunch of what I am hoping are Dahoon Hollies growing on the ground in this really shady corner. Now I see probably like 12 different seedlings. I definitely am gonna dig up maybe half of them, get them potted, watch them grow, watch them develop, and then truly identify what they may be. But hopefully they are Dahoon Hollies, which have a ton of berries that birds love, and they are evergreen, so I can plant them throughout the landscape, and they'll definitely have that evergreen vibe that can block out neighbors, form somewhat of a hedgerow along my fences, and overall attract wildlife at the same time. So let's go ahead and dig these up and see what's good with them. Now, Dahoon Hollies are ideal because they can grow in part shade and they're evergreen, like I said. And each one of these that I dug up was small. It appears that a bird definitely did blow one of these seeds out their backside, or at least a few seeds. And it's nice to be able to scoop these guys up, transplant them, and hopefully let them grow and be able to place them exactly where I would like in the yard. These grow all throughout the neighborhood. They look gorgeous, they're native, and they grow more in the southeast of the United States. So zones like seven to 11, where it's hot and humid. But yeah, I actually put some of these in smaller pots too just to ensure that they would take off. And then I'm gonna size them up in the future. So, okay, y'all, we have a ton of trees potted up behind me. This is going to be my temporary little grow out. I also did pot up a ton of jackfruit trees that I did grow from seed. So those will be in this area as well. But the last thing you have to do when digging up trees, because obviously they get traumatized, all right? Their roots get torn up, bedraggled, mishandled. So I'm gonna go ahead and water everything deeply in that way all of the trees have the best chance of acclimating and surviving but yes there we have it that is how you get free trees with that being said i do have a ton of trees that are growing in the full sun area of my yard but it is hot as hell outside so i'll probably dig those up in a future video people are steady weed eating so i will catch you guys next time always remember Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. Be sure to smash the like button. And uh, yeah, maybe eventually I have more trees than I can handle and I'll do like a tree giveaway or something like that. But yeah, I'll catch y'all next time. Peace. Killing these songs, leaving a bloody life by roosting. And I'm in it to win it, so I'm somebody that you should get used to.